What is up, Humanoid Nation? So, no stalling, let's get right to it. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll provide the first two links of you from 1 to 10 and 10 to 20 below. So, let's get this shit started. I am Weasel. So guys, you ever seen the show Cow and Chicken and how messed up it is? Like, if you think about it, like, normal human family gives birth to a cow and a fucking chicken. Okay, so off that show, they spawned off this other show called I Am Weasel. Basically, it's this weasel who's the gift of all gander. And there's an idiotic ape in there somewhere doing stupid things. But it's basically about the weasel. And then there's Satan rolling around doing stupid shit. It's a kid show. Of course you're gonna have Satan. Back in the 90s, no one gave a shit. Try and get away with that today, having Satan as one of your characters. Parents would be so up in arms. Oh, won't somebody please think of the children? 22, the raccoons. Don't know what I'm talking about? Watch the intro. Life would be simple in the forest, except for Cyril Sneer. Hold on a tick. The intro to this show is just weird. Let's just look into this. Let's just do this. And we got this. What the fuck? You got a big dog and then a little dog that's actually a pet. And that guy's naked. Life would be what the fuck? Life the forest, except for Cyril Sneer. Hey, man. You gotta have the Mr. Burns of the show. Why is he naked though? Why? No, seriously, why is that guy naked? Everybody else is wearing clothes at least. At least they're wearing shirts. And the one guy is naked. Well, except for the dog. But he's a dog, so it kind of makes sense. And then he has a pet, which is a dog. Is it his son? I don't know, it's been way too long. It's been way too long. I gotta go back and watch this show. No, but seriously, why is this guy naked? walking around with his girlfriend. So many questions, so many questions. 23, Pensacola, Wings of Gold. Basically, this show is like Top Gun. Sort of, but without the homoerotic shit going on. Let's have a look at the intro. And that's pretty much it. Same formula every week, doing whatever they need to do in their job that they do. It was a cool show, after all. It was indeed a good show. 24 VIP. You guys don't understand. I got my lucky punch. I'm not a bodyguard. But we are. You just be a figurehead. A name on the door. You'll probably never even leave the office. You'll help us pull in the rich and famous. We'll do the rest. We're professionals. We'll take care of all the tough stuff. So I'll never be in any danger? Never. 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 So let me get this straight. They get a blonde bombshell to do nothing just to sell their agency. Gee, I wonder why they had Pamela Anderson in this show. Yep, that's pretty much it. But uh, but surprisingly, this was a good show, even though Pamela Anderson's acting is not even there. But everybody else did a good job of it too, because like they pretty much saved the show. They pretty much saved the show. Like I said, Pamela Anderson was just there just to look at, and we can't blame her for that. Well, of course we can, but it was the '90s, so who gave a shit? Twenty-five. I felt a great disturbance in the force. As if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. I fear something terrible has happened. Polly Shore. <laughs> ah, come back here, you pussies. Polly Shore. That's a name I'll never forget. 
You see, kids who don't know what I'm talking about, Pauly Shore back in the day was this popular guy who had one thing going for him. Basically played this stoner surfer dude's like, I'm the reason, oh! Pretty much got annoying from the get-go. Although he was pretty good in Encino Man and Son-in-Law. But you know who he is from the fucking Biodome movie. God damn, that was stupid but enjoyable because it was a guilty pleasure. But yeah, Pauly Shore had a show called Pauly. I could not find the intro to this on YouTube, but I found a commercial to it. So here you go. Fuck! No! It can't be. What is it? It can't be. What did you do, Ray? Oh, shit. For a rich kid like Holly Sherman, uh, his party is going to be kinky every day with a holiday. Miss Delaware. Ooh, Delaware, who likes to not say until his dad's new fiance moved in. I have bras that work harder than you. Now, the party's over, but the war has just begun. Your father listens to me, you know. I have his ear. That's not the only thing you have, it is. Call it a new comedy, pardon me. Fight me from here next week on Fox. I tried to think of the most harmless thing. Something I loved from my childhood. Something that could never, ever possibly destroy us. Ray has gone bye-bye, Egon. What have you got left? Sorry, Franklin. I'm terrified beyond the capacity for rational thought. Not impressed, huh? Well, it is Polly Shore. It is Polly Shore. I don't blame you. I don't blame you whatsoever. Although, I wonder how many episodes this show lasted. Seven episodes. Don't blame him. Don't blame him. 26. Earthworm Jim. Bruh. If you ever seen the most amazing show ever, it's Earthworm Jim. Just check out the intro. We can be a winner if we only sing along. Earthworm Jim. We think he's mighty fine. Earthworm Jim. A hero for all time. Have you guys ever played the game? It's such a badass game. Everything in this show is pretty badass. My god, just, I don't know what else I can say about this show. This was the best show ever in the 90s. Just go YouTube it. Find it somewhere. You'll enjoy it. You'll enjoy it. 27. Reboot. You know what? I can admit something. I did not enjoy this show when I was a kid. Yet, I enjoyed this show over Reboot. Destruction to all who threaten us. The royalty commands it. Yeah, Beast Wars was a shit, even though they had the same kind of animation style. Well, now, if you look back on it, the animation is pretty much shit, but back then, it was something fierce. It was something fierce. But yeah, now that I'm older, I gotta give Reboot a chance. Because it actually does kind of look good, like, because I couldn't stand it when I was a kid. Hey, now I'm growing up older now, cause, and I'm giving the shows I... Didn't give a chance, I'm giving it a chance now. Plus, there is one reason I want to watch this show now. You yeah. kicked it to a hoe? Mama? <laughs> oh! Why, yes, it is. Young Enzo Matrix, home from the games. My, how you've grown. Motherfucker Tony J. That guy, guy. That guy. My god, that guy. If Tony J's in it, it's got to be good, because goddamn, his voice itself can make any straight man gay. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Oh, God. Oh, my God. 28. The PJs. Now we have another animation style show, which starred Eddie Murphy. Run, bitch! Run! Hold on before you run away, because oh, I know you guys are thinking now, because Eddie Murphy now... He's not even funny whatsoever, but this was back in the day when he was sort of kind of funny. Well, come on, this guy did Vampire in Brooklyn. If you're hungry, I'll run you down to KFC down the street and hit you off with a two-piece. I already had Italian. This was before Norbit and all the Pluto Nash shit, but right after Vampire in Brooklyn. So he was still in the middle there. But yeah, he did an amazing show called The PJs, where he plays a super in the ghetto. Pulling down a cardboard condo, homeboy and a homemade bungalow. In the middle of the end of the one way. I'm just 
gonna show you a clip. Just watch. Here, maybe some coffee will help you boys think. Mm, well, I never drink caffeine. Yeah, it's habit forming. You are cracking! That clip alone doesn't give it enough justice. This show was just too good. It only lasted like two seasons, I believe. And it was the best show out there. It got cancelled because of bullshit. Because, you know, the good shows always get cancelled and the crappy shows always stay back then. But yeah, Eddie Murphy had an amazing show back then. The PJs. Give it a chance, guys. You'll love it. 29! Back to the Future, the animated series. <laughs> I'm going to say this, it wasn't the best show, it wasn't the worst, it was just meh, it takes place after part 3, so basically it's Dr. Brown and the rest of his family along with Marty McFly going on adventures through time and fucking up time, but since it's cartoon wise you can't really fuck up time, I don't know, it was weird, but yeah, it was one of those shows where it wasn't the best, it wasn't the greatest, it was just there and it's meh. Just letting you know. Number 30, MTV Celebrity Deathmatch. Hey kids, you know ERB, Epic Rap Battles of today? Well, take that and basically, Epic Rap Battles is basically MTV Celebrity Deathmatch back in the day, minus the rap battles. Because basically, they took the concept of taking celebrities and having them fight to the death in claymation style, which was amazing. My name is Slim Shade. I don't know if Eminem has cred on the street, but he's certainly earning it here in the arena. You got basically everyone. You got Instinct versus Backstreet Boys, not the actual actors. Well, sometimes the real people would do voices, but sometimes they would do like celebrity voices. And it was still pretty good. Who gave a shit? It was entertaining as fuck. Because come on, you got Kid Rock versus Eminem, Madonna versus Prince, a bunch of other stuff. My God, they just went all out on this. And the commentary, two commentators in the show, they actually brought it, like, they announced this, like, a real event, even though it was just a regular TV show. It was the shit, guys. It was the shit. Celebrity Deathmatch. Tune in next time, whenever that is, when I do 31 to 40. And that's it for now, Humanoid Nation. Humanoid Freak Out. Bye!